We got a lot of wrestling to talk about here on the program today and a lot of tomfoolery and shenanigans, the backstage stuff, the stuff that is really interesting in wrestling these days since that's what everybody wants to know about. That's where all the drama is, where all the realism is. But we've got to recognize not only some of the the listeners out there, we've got some viewer mail. We want to share some of the Cult of Cornet members' opinions today, but also we have to go ahead and, because it's been a few weeks. I mean, it's been a big few weeks. The pay-per-views and the, you know, declining ratings for AEW and the debuts of megastars for the WWE, we haven't had time to honor our fallen furry friends and feathered friends. Some may even, we don't do ones with scales, but uh, we haven't had time for Reggie's Corner. So I, th I thought this is the, we don't want to get too far behind with recognizing some of our, our departed members of the cult out there with four legs or two wings or, well, some of them had three scales. legs, even the dogs. No, we don't do scales. No scales? I mean... We're not going to do... Well, we might do a fish, but we're not going to do any snakes. We'll do fish? Really? But now I was I was enumerating the appendages, and I realized that we have had a three-legged dog, I believe, in the past. So regardless of how many appendages, the fur, the feathers, our little animal friends, bestiality is what I'm talking no, about. No, that's yeah. not what we're talking about, and that's not what this is about, but... Uh... No, I'm talking about the the, 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 the animal kingdom, the, the world of the beasts. That's what we're talking about now. That is certainly not the definition of bestiality. Go get your Merriam-Webster collection over there, but I'll play the jingle now to prevent you from saying anything else. This is Reggie's Corner. <laughs> Reggie's Corner. We're here to talk about your good boys and girls. Reggie's Corner. We're so sorry they're dead now. I'll have you know I don't use the Merriam-Webster. I use the American Heritage Dictionary, and I can just look it up right here if you give me just one more second here so I can get to the B-E's, and I'll explain to you that I used that in completely, properly, a uh, Oh, please. Uh, 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 oh, maybe. Yeah, no, this will be a great YouTube clip. Jim Cornette defends his use of bestiality. Maybe I misspoke. I was <laughs> thinking of the, the animal kingdom, and it came out the other. Yeah. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, we got in some of these that might be a few weeks old. As I said, we've had other things going on, but. Again, and, and we, we can't by any means be complete here with all the emails we get because I don't see them all, at, at, to be quite honest with you, because it's, uh, sometimes it's a deluge, busy times, blah, 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 the all-night gas station, refer back to that. So Austin, from an undisclosed, no, central Pennsylvania, I thought he was an un, un, undisclosed location. And this was so sad because Austin lost his two-year-old puppy, Toby to a tick-related illness. He was less than a foot tall. Toby? Toby. A test drive for Toby? No, come on now. You can't, you can't joke about the puppies. You ever see that movie? You ever see Used Cars? It's one of my favorite comedies. I don't know what you're talking about. You never saw Used Cars? That's right in the prime of, like, Jim Cornette out of high school, but not yet in the wrestling business, causing trouble, but not too much trouble, but he'll go see an R-rated movie. You didn't see it? What the, it's used car with who? Kurt Russell. Was Goldie Hawn in it? No, it was before they started. Uh, well, see, I'd have a better chance to remember it if, uh. No, they have a dog. Uh, they're at a used car dealership and they have a dog, a very tiny dog that on command will pretend it's dead and lay behind a tire so they could guilt a family into buying one of their crappy used cars because they killed Toby while going for a test drive for Toby. So you're going you're going to equate Toby the fucking, small dog a, with Toby a malicious the small dog. a malicious illegal insurance scam with the the loss of of a 2-year-old puppy named Toby to a tick related illness. I don't see how insurance got involved in this in any way and for the record uh, years ago Dennis Carluzzo said it was all a okay. All right, in that case, if it passed the Coraluzzo uh, insurance, insurance test, yes. uh, test, then all right, but moving on, and we're sorry, Austin, for all of that. 
That's uh, also, Kevin and Tiffany wrote in, and unfortunately, they need to induct Groot, the floppy-eared bunny, to Reggie's corner. Oh, come on. Why are bunnies allowed oh. in, but oh, now you don't animals like, with scales aren't? You don't like bunnies? You'd rather have a snake or a lizard than a bunny. Yeah, I mean, we may have even discussed this before. Bunnies shit everywhere. They get covered in shit. They bite. Well, I've never had a bad experience with them. We've had bunnies here at the castle, and they they live out there under the yeah. bushes, and and they you don't capture them, they and bring eat, them in the house. They eat carrots. Well, no, they got plenty of room out there. No need for me to uproot them from their home. But that's different. Having them just bounce around in the corners of your property is different than having them in your house. But they're cute and adorable. Nah. And furry and fuzzy. And anyway, as a matter of fact, Kevin. His wife, Tiffany, had had Groot longer than she'd had him. And he used to hop around the house and hump one of the cats. And it was a fun game because their young son had no idea what was going on at the point at that point. But unfortunately, Groot is gone. But he was a great bunny and wanted to be immortalized in Reggie's corner. What the hell's going on in that house? To Kevin and Tiffany Groot, we send our sympathy. Groot was their last name? Well, I get. Well, it is now, I guess. No, the Groot was the name of their uh, their bunny <laughs> the rabbit. Groot who... was the name of the bunny. Well, the bunny had, had the run of the place around there. The bunny was the most important person. Yeah, so from now really. on, they're Kevin and Tiffany Groot. And Tiffany thought it was okay for the kid to watch the bunny fuck the cat. They all thought well, that was only, only when he was so young that they didn't know what was going on. What the fuck was the cat thinking? Well, the cat was probably thinking, how the. Fuck, did I get so lucky to be in the middle of this fucking family of freaks? Holy shit. Yeah, why'd, bring they bring this, the fucking... why'd they bring this bunny into our house? I was having a nice, peaceful time here, looking at everyone condescendingly, oh, that... and this bunny that... came and started fucking me. The cat was getting all kinds of pussy. Or the it bunny was, the was pussy. getting all kinds of pussy. The cat well, was but... the pussy. Well, then... I assume... Well, then, if the cat was the pussy, then the then Groot was the... Groot's your daddy. Well, Tiffany and uh, Wesley Groot, we're sorry for your... What was his name? Groot. No, his name. The, the oh. Man, the, <laughs> <laughs> Not Groot from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and the bunny, but the man. Tiffany's man. <laughs> Kevin. Kevin, Kevin was his name. We're yes. very sorry for your loss, Kevin. So you think I got that whole thing mixed up and Kevin was the bunny? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't be. It can't be. I All apologize right. for that. Yes. Let's get Daniel in Connecticut. Oh, I'm Moving so sorry, Moving on to Daniel. another pussy. I'm so sorry, Daniel. Already. Connecticut. Oof. No. Um, hello, Jim and Brian. I wanted to submit my mother's cat to Reggie's corner. His name was Mittens. And he was the friendliest cat of all time. He would run up to anybody in the house and meow at them, basically saying, pet me, motherfucker, I love you. Unfortunately, he died from lead poisoning due to drinking contaminated water. Which he did after we let a bunny in the house. He said, oh, I can't take this anymore. Give me the, the lead. The bunny had nothing to do with, with uh, mittens. The bunny. Mittens and the bunny weren't even in the same state. But Daniel, we're, we're not only our sympathies to you, but also your mother for mittens. And, but how do you, go, what, will a cat just walk up to a, like an open sludge pool of liquid and drink contaminated water? I mean, do they not have the, dogs don't do that, do they? Well, you know, there are, are stupid animals too. Not every animal has the same level of intellect. Well, where are you trying to cut? Kind of... I'm not saying this animal, this dead animal, whatever his name was or whatever it may be. Mittens. I don't even remember. Mittens the cat. That's right. You're not. You're not getting in the in the fucking loving flavor of the segment here today, Brian. The loving flavor. The loving flavor. Have a little sympathy for these people are our loved ones or these people's loved ones are animals of various descriptions. I'd like yeah. to go to another cat. I'm sorry about mittens. Kevin. I heard about, I've heard from Matt from Bergen County, New Jersey. Now, hey. don't fuck with him. He's from Bergen County. I got no problem with Matt. It saddens me to submit my recently departed cat Phoebe into the hallowed, hallowed halls of Reggie's Corner. 
but I am at peace knowing she'll be among other animal greats as she crosses the Rainbow Bridge. Animal greats. <laughs> well, that's where there's a lot of memorable uh, furry friends in this hallowed hall here. But um, Do you think there are retroactive members of Reggie's Corner and also famous members? Like, for instance, would Lassie be a retroactive famous we're No, member? no remember the I celebrity said no. Wing. No. Remember, I said when when the guy wrote in and said, well, he's been dead 10 years, but I'd like to induct little Bupkis. I said, we got to set a some kind of modern time limit on this of recent, current, contemporaneous, whatever, because then everybody that's ever had a beloved pet, which would be everybody, would be deluging us, and this would have to be in its entire own separate five-hour program. But Phoebe... Whenever you would pet her, she'd flop over on her side and let you rub her belly. And she was a sweet cat, so we're going to all miss her. Phoebe! See, you never saw Monster Squad. You don't even get the reference. <sighs> Do you have to equate every animal passing to a vintage movie? I got more. Michael and his wife. You have to sing a song. From yeah. Where I Do Not Know. Lost their Shih Tzu puppy, Genesis, just oh. shy of 15 years old on November the 1st. Oh, I'm very sorry. That's very sad. Good Lord. I, you sound like a fucking grieving widow of a business tycoon who was heavily insured on the fucking witness stand. <laughs> I don't know about that, sir, but no, Swan is a Shih Tzu poodle, so I... Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you were just uh, yeah. going quickly to the fake sympathy to no. fucking... So now when it hits close to home, it's a different matter. I never fake it with you. Well, that's good to know, big boy. But <laughs> during during Genesis's illness, they stayed up to listen to the podcast. And uh, his wife and, and he took turns sleeping downstairs next to her every night to make sure she was okay. But it was a mostly old age and et cetera. But we're sorry to hear about Genesis. And also... Daniel from Selmer, Tennessee, and I've been there. Where is it? I got eliminated in the Battle Royal. Uh, it sent a picture of Lexi, uh, who passed away the day before Halloween. She was an 11-year-old mini Yorkie, and she would listen to our podcast, Brian, while she was in Daniel's lap. And uh, so we've lost another listener, probably due to, to you in some fashion. Or whatever's going on in Daniel's lap. Hey, what? Now, Don't blame me. What are you taking are shots you accused, at me? Are you, now, who's talking about bestiality now? You and Daniel, clearly. Daniel is traveling tonight on a plane. And I can see his red tail lights as they're heading for Spain. He's leaving the country to beat that charge. All right. And again from, uh, <laughs> from Jason. Any dogs um, this week? Any dogs? Hold on, I'm about... Oh, we, had, we had the Shih Tzu, we had the Shih Tzu. We had the... You, we've had the Shih Tzu, all right. We've, and also, I was in the middle of it. Jason from Spartanburg, South Carolina, presented for enshrinement their bestest girl, Tanner. She was half Jack Russell and half Chihuahua. 17 years old. And she passed away November 6th. And I hate to hear about... But again... 17 years old. That's a full life for the, the, little, the little puppies. Um, and also, uh, hold on, where's uh, Lawrence? Lawrence lost their 12-year-old dog, well, 12-ish-year-old dog, Beanie, which was short for Sabina, to cancer. He says all leaf blowers and vacuum cleaners were heels to her, but she was a rescue dog, so they think she was 12, but they had her for nine years. She would have loved it around here with all the leaf blowers and noises going on. And anyway, finally, I got a very interesting email from Anthony, who also has an Italian last name. He may as well be from Bergen, New Jersey or whatever, so we're not going to say anything bad about him because he's, you know, he's connected. You don't, don't say that. Don't make assumptions. And that's all Hollywood. You don't want to, you know, go down that road. I have no recollection of that. But he says, hi, Jim. And of course, Brian, you are implied. Listening to a recent episode, including Reggie's Corner, you spoke about a listener hitting a deer. 
Thankfully, I've never hit a deer, but I have hit an animal. I think very few probably ever have. A few years ago, I was driving home from work very late around midnight, pouring down rain, middle of nowhere. I saw something small in the road, maybe a mouse or something like a squirrel. I planned on driving over, hoping it would go under my car and I wouldn't hit it. But before I could even finish that thought, something massive dove down in front of me and I had no time to react. I slammed into it and ran it right over. Bam! I pulled over immediately. Looking back in the road, a massive owl lay in the middle of the street, the front end of my car covered in blood and feathers. By this point, I was soaking wet from the rain. I got back in my car to breathe and think. I finished the drive home all of two miles. The only issue with my car was my front end alignment was fucked. To drive straight, my hands were at 12 and 6. I had a very nice car at that time, a 2013 Buick Verano. The fuck is that? Have you ever seen one of them? Probably, but I just don't know it by name because I don't drive Buicks. Well, I'm sure the people at Buick would be most happy to hear that. Well, this slowed down. What what, what were you saying about the dead animal? So when I looked at my car the next morning, there was no damage outside needing or no damage past needing a front end alignment, but the rain washed the remains clean off. I drove down the road and there was a massive oh no owl with a <laughs> wingspan easily four to five feet dragged out off, off to the side of the road. Oh. I still feel awful about the poor bird. <laughs> Have you ever run over an animal and not stop just because, you know, you're on the highway or something and you're going somewhere? Uh, it, well, no. Well, I... Not out of cruelty, thing. obviously. I have, no, I have never... The only time that I've ever run over an animal, because I'll break for a fucking squirrel and cause a six-car pileup of humans, uh, but I, I ran over the neighborhood bunny rabbit when I lived in Morristown, Tennessee and was running Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Every night when I would come home late from a town, I would drive up the hill into my little housing area, and a rabbit would run right out alongside the road and and like it was greeting me. And I, hello, little buddy rabbit. And one night, I'm coming home, and this fucking rabbit just darted out right in front of the car before I could even react and sploosh. It was, I mean, it was, I could, couldn't have done it on purpose. And I was goddamn so mad. I, I didn't want to drive again. If I ever killed a dog, I might never be able to get behind the wheel again. So, no, I've, a, I, I stay away from all of the, and I'm aware of these things. Do you think that's the biggest heel thing you did while in Smoky Mountain? Run over the neighborhood bunny rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> Who killed the rabbit? It was Jim Cornette. Well, I mean, I don't know whether it was a big deal for anybody else or not. They may not have even noticed it was there. But back to this owl. The point is, Anthony, we appreciate your email, but this is not Al Jolson. I love to sing it about the moon and the June and the spring. Of. This is not the only time that I have heard of a person hitting possibly an owl, but a bird, because remember I told you, of what, a year or two ago, Bobby Fulton, on his way down the interstate, same thing, a goddamn big-ass bird of some description was swooping down to snatch up some tiny little prey and had a double knockout with his car, and when he got to the gas station, a goddamn bird was stuck up under the goddamn hood of the car in the grill. And he looked, and there was a goddamn bird's ass sticking out at him. So it can happen. So remember, people, when you're on the interstate, watch out for flying birds. And this has been Reggie's Corner, apparently. This has been Reggie's Corner. Goodbye to our friends on the other side. On the next Reggie's Corner, we'll talk about a bunch more pets who died. Welcome to the big time, bitch! Woof, woof!
All right. How do, you know, you get a lot, <laughs> a lot more enjoyment out of that than you ought to. Oh, that is so funny. Woof, wash woof. the taste out. We have woof woof. 